Hi, I'm Tanner Smith, and if you're still anticipating the big final battle between Harry Potter and Voldemort, then don't worry, we got one more movie to go. This is Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows, Part 1. Alright, now Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows Part 1 is the second to the last in the Harry Potter film series, which is adapted from the Harry Potter book series by J.K. Rowling. It's going to keep us wondering at the end what's going to happen in Part 2, which comes out soon, but that's not to say that this Part 1 doesn't have any good moments. This is actually the best Harry Potter film to come around in a long time because this is where stuff starts to happen. This is what anticipates the final battle. Hogwarts is no longer a safe place for young wizards and witches. In fact, we barely even see it in this movie. The story involves those three likable heroes that we've all come to know and love, Harry Potter, Ron Weasley, and Hermione Granger, on a quest around the country to find these horcruxes that will finally put an end to Voldemort's reign of terror since he came back in the Goblet of Fire. Rafe Fiennes plays the evil Voldemort, and Alan Rickman has joined the dark side as Professor Snape. Dolish the Order has let slip that the Potter boy will not be moved until the 30th of this month, the day before he turns 17. This is a false trail. Meanwhile, there's tension among the three heroes. They don't seem to trust each other that much. Did, did you think we were going to be staying in a five-star hotel, finding a horcrux every other day? You thought you'd be back with your mum by Christmas? I just thought, after all this time, we would have actually achieved something. I thought you knew what you were doing. I thought Dumbledore would have told you something worthwhile. I thought you had a plan. I told you everything Dumbledore told me. And in case you haven't noticed, we have found a horcrux already. Yeah, and we're about as close to getting rid of it as we are to finding the rest of them, aren't we? Like I said, this is the Harry Potter entry in which stuff starts to happen. The Ministry of Magic is out to kill these kids, even. And there's a terrifying CGI snake that may scare little kids, but don't be fooled. This is PG-13, not PG, like the last movie, so take that into consideration. This adventure among these three is very satisfying because I haven't seen something like this since... Well, probably the Prisoner of Azkaban. It seems that since then, uh, Ron and Hermione haven't had much to do, and here, they're caught up in the adventure, and they're all played well by the actors. And it's also very powerful because these characters that we've grown to know and love are not kids anymore. Their school days are nostalgic memories now, and the stakes are higher this time around. They've also reached a state of adulthood and now have to take things upon themselves. They spend most of their journey alone as Voldemort sends his minions out to get them. Now, the movie does end abruptly. Someone should have added the caption to be concluded or something, but... Part 2 does arrive in a few months, and then we will finally see every plot point line up, every character situation resolved, and the villains will fight the heroes in a final climactic battle. But you must see every Harry Potter movie before you see that movie, and you must see this film as well.